Okay. Welcome back to a very late belated video from Kane's Armory regarding a smorgasbord of paints. Hopefully the echo is not too bad. Hopefully you can hear me well enough. I still haven't gotten a microphone, but I just spent an hour looking for my camera stand, so at least we've got that. <laughs> okay. The focus of today's video is on metallic paints, specifically golden metallic paints today because I am going to do that. And that is almost done and simple. It's in the garage right now, and I just have to do some finishing touches, and I have to start painting it. And one of the things, if you've ever done projects before, that you discover is that when you have a golden paint, or any metallic paint at all, and you go to clear coat it with something, you take this metallic, shiny nature of the paint and dull it. You take from gold, to just off orange or if it's silver it just turns gray and you could have just started off with gray in the first place if you do that so why are you using metallic paints in the first place well that's what we're going to go over in detail today cue an intro how about how about the zoom by we'll do the zoom by i'm going to make Oh, shiny. I am going to make... Ooh, I just put my thumbprint in it. Uh, I am going to make a layer of each paint using this mask. And I'm going to label them, then we'll go over them, and then we're going to test them with the clear coats. So, first things first. Out of all the tapes that I, paints that I have up here, this is the one that is the most durable, most enduring... Most endurable, most enduring, those are cinnamons. This, this, out of all the paints that I have up here, this paint is the one that needs the least amount of care. This is enamel. And enamel paints dry very hard. They also keep this shine finish when you go over it with one of these clear coats. So, we're going to use this as part of our test to show that because there's always exceptions when you use various types of clear coats. So, this one came from, oh, m most any hobby store. Michael's and Hobby Lobby sells this, and I love it. Incidentally, here's a clear coat, spray lacquer clear coat, that is really good on metallics, and I've been using it quite a bit for various parts, and it only dulls it just a little bit. Though it is made for lacquer paints, you can get spray lacquer paints from testers at the same hobby store, I got this from. You just have to be aware. Some say lacquer and some say enamel. This is another Michaels find. I just saw this one and I was like, what's this all about? I've never seen this before. So this is a brand new can and I'm going to try it out and give it a go. Now, aside from the instructions, there it is. Acetone and toluene. T-O-L-U-E-N-E. -E, how have you pronounce that? That is very common for spray paints. This comes in copper, brass, and gold. I am out of gold, so I'm just going to use the brass for this example. Close enough. It works. This particular one contains ethyl benzene, acetone, propane, and butane. Butane is usually used as an accelerant, and if you've ever used those before, you also know that those evaporate very quickly to obtain this metallic uh, texture. I have three Rust-Oleum brand paints right here. Each one is different. This one, Specialty Metallic. I can always identify it by that green container whenever I'm looking to shop online for it. This is Tuline and Xylenes, X-Y-L-E-N-E. -E. That's a different uh, uh, suspension and propellant. This one is liquefied petroleum gas, acetone, aromatic hydrocarbons, dimethyl carbonate, petroleum distillate, and inbutyl acetate. I am not a chemist. I don't know what these are. This is amazing. <laughs> This one, I absolutely despise this series from Rust-Oleum. 
they say that this is an easy to grip, easy to use trigger. And to be perfectly honest with you, it is a pain in the butt. It wears my hand out. Squeezing this trigger is a effort of extreme futility because your hand gets tired. Um, but it contains liquefied petroleum gas, acetone acetates, xylenes, petroleum distillates, and glycol ether. This is an ether-based paint, which is weird. Out of all of these, this has the worst finish. But if you're not looking for gold, this one also has the best finishes. I've seen this one in wrought iron, hammered iron, nickel plate. The most beautiful arrangement of colors come from this series in the worst to use caps. So what I usually do, and you can see my hammer marks right here. There's a big old warning sign on here. Don't hammer. I've been doing it because what I do is I pop this off. Once you pop this off, this trigger nozzle is just an L shape and it gets clogged so easily on this series of paints. I end up just popping it off and just pressing it from the top, which is actually easier to use than this. Don't do that at home because that is a big no-no. <laughs> All right, the piece de la resistance. This, this is amazing. What is this? Montana Gold, Gold, NC Acrylic Paint. Now, it may say gold right there on the side. That is the brand. That is the color. So you'll see these in all kinds of different colors. When you get this paint, there's no lid. This is how it comes. You get these. Sometimes they come with them. This one came with them. And there's usually a ring right here that you have to pop out. Then you put this on, and this nozzle is customizable like a airbrush. So you can get heavy flow, thin flows, pin points, so on and so forth. These were generally used as tagging spray paints for painting large murals, as you would see taggers. Um, this is an acrylic spray paint, where most of these are acryl acrylic vinyl uh, hybrids. Um... Solvent-based nitroacrylic professional spray paint. Nitroacrylic, very interesting. I'm not a chemist again, so I don't know what that means. Those are big fancy words. Okay, some of these you might recognize. This is a crystal clear enamel. You know it because it says so. This, with this has the hopes of turning, say, this. Whoop, this, or even whoop, this, into whoop, this, an enamel paint. Mm -hmm. That's the idea, but it always dulls it every single flip in time. So if I do something that's hard, I love to use this because it makes the paint nigh invincible. But it dulls it, and we're trying to figure out how that won't happen this time. Same thing that happens this. This is the second brand I've tried, Winsor Newton Professional Gloss Varnish. Um, I usually use Grumbarch's Final Varnish, and I'm giving this one a try. One thing I have noticed about this one, and I don't know if it's true with Grumbarch's as well, is that whenever you use this, if you introduce it to alcohol after you apply, this is a clear coat, by the way, if you use this, and you put like rubbing alcohol or Windex to clean your item, it fogs the finish. So I'm not necessarily happy with this. I got to test that in the Grumbarches as well to see if it happens there too, but it'll dull any of these paints as well. Now, this are these are preventers. Oh gosh, that shine. All right, these are preventers. Um, these are the ones that I'm testing out right now. This is Model Master, which is a brand of testers these guys. This is a metalizer. Now, it says for airbrush only, adhere to that because if you put this on too thick, it fogs up and becomes a pain in the butt. Um, this is alcohol acetates methyl ethyl ketone. Ketone, that's the key there. Um, so what this does for all of these paints, or what it tries to do for any paint. Specifically, this is generally for lacquers, but you can apply it for many other types of paints. 
including the bottle paints where you get for modeling kits, and this will keep it metallic when you apply the clear coat. Um, this one as well, this is All Clad 2 Lacquer Aqua Gloss Clear. There is Aqua Gloss Clear and I can't get that shine to come off because it's a round bottle. Trust me, that's what it says. There's another version called Clear Coat uh, with a K. Clear Coat with a K. Um, that is more transparent than this milky substance. The reason why I'm trying this is because you can clean it out of your airbrush with water or the other type needs a paint thinner or lacquer thinner. So I don't have that, so this one is more beneficial to me and that's why I have it. Speaking of airbrushes... This is just the cheapest airbrush I could find. It is all you need. <laughs> you do not have to have expensive airbrushes to do this. So the idea, and this is, this is how all of this works. Whenever you put a layer of paint down, say with this paint, you spray paint your surface, and you end up with this, this shiny metallic gold surface. The reason why it is this is because it has micro uh, flakes of metallicized or metallic looking powder. Sometimes it's mica, sometimes it's something else, sometimes they actually suspend it with metal flakes. That's at least how they used to do it. I know that there's another brand, uh, Duplicolor, that has a metalizer. Um, I don't know if it contains metal flakes or another mica, but it's, it's the only other one that I don't have up here right now, but it's usually in silver. Once you get that layer down and you're ready to go on doing whatever else, the reason why this is able to stay that way is because as the colors e or the, uh, those materials that I read off to you, this liquefied propellant gas, acetone, aromatic, hydrocarbon, so on and so forth that's on here, when that evaporates, the paint compresses just like when you have an emulsion in water. And as the water evaporates, everything settles and flattens out. When it is flattened out, it gives you this faux metallic shine. A la this. This is silver, of course, but that's the exact same idea. It's a pretty good metallic shine. I'm trying not to have it blind you, and I apologize about that. And you might notice it as you spray it. It seems like it's kind of swimming. It's swirling in on itself, and as time goes by, it settles down, blah, blah, blah and you get the finish. In order to keep that finish, you have to keep that paint in that state. So when I add this, what it does is it bonds with this. So that top layer is reintroduced with a liquid. Now even though it'll evaporate again, it does not lay flat. It lays in a random pattern giving you the dulled effect, completely nullifying the effect, the attempt of the metallic. So, this is introduced as an in-between. You put the paint down, you put this down, then you put this down.
Test one done. And then the camera and in real life, we're noticing a little bit of white fogging on that little strip right there. Top is all clad, bottom is uh, the testers. My scribbly, scrabbly handwriting tells me so. <laughs> All right, so the trick of all clad is it takes eight hours. Well, all clad aqua clear coat takes eight hours to dry at minimum. So I need to let that dry for eight hours before I touch it. I've got other gunk in here. The gunk's not what I'm worried about. Um, I could have used a proper paint booth for this. But uh, the real issue on this is does it dull the paint? So the gunk, I don't care about. Anything else on there, I don't care about. Anything falls on, I don't care about bug it, I don't care about it. I just want to know if it's going to dull the paint. And I have, I have a lot of paints to test. And I don't have enough little things right there. So I think I'm going to limit it to um, two. The two that I use the most common. And that's going to be uh, the enamel and the final varnish. Uh, that would be for hard materials and then soft materials for the final varnish. So I'm going to use those two, and I'm not going to use the lacquers or any other clear coats that I have for now. Well, those tests will have to come later because I just did the two. There it is. It's on the final clamp down. Yeah. I'm cheesy.